We've got a lot of fun things to discuss today. I'm really excited. Um, and I really thank you for joining us for this film funding series because there's so many things that we need to think about in raising money. And the trailer to me is one of the most important things. So we're going to be giving advice in, on creating and improving your trailer. And so to begin with, I want to introduce you to our IT specialist, Nahid Ishmael. Nahid is running the technical side today. He's a brilliant young man who's been on our board of directors for many years. He's a longtime family friend, and he is a flamenco guitarist. So I'd like to introduce him, but I'm going to have him tell you what it's like because he's currently living in his home in Kenya. So tell us about living in Kenya and taking people on safaris. Thank you. Thank you, Carol, and thanks everyone for joining. Uh, really looking forward to hosting you in today's event. N my name is Nahid Ismail. I'm an IT specialist and also a board of directors with From the Heart Productions. Currently, I am in, uh, in East Africa leading expeditions, and I will also share my info on the chat on how you can reach me. Uh, for today, uh, we also have a treat for everyone. Carol and uh, Brianne, while they present, they will mention two film quotes from movies. And the first person to answer the correct answer will receive a new online three-hour class called How to Fund Your Film. We will announce this at the end of the class. So please pay attention and listen to the quotations that uh, Carol is, uh, is going to mention during her speech today. Also, uh, there is another class uh, which uh, Carol Dean and Tom Malloy teach uh, uh, for a small group of entrepreneur filmmakers, their unique international filmmaking class, which is twice a year. The last one starts on September 27th. They have a few seats left and Carol and Tom teach you how to create your materials. They teach you how to pitch your film, find high network individuals and, and close them. So this is also at a discount and the discount code is uh, trailers. You will get a $150 discount. And uh, this discount uh, will end on Saturday, the promotion. So please uh, feel free uh, to uh, look at the chat box. I'll add this information and uh, we'll be ready to start our event. So I will pass it back to uh, Carol. Thanks okay. and uh, Carol, back to you. Yeah, thank you. Well, first of all, the reason I chose the trailer as our material is because it is so important to funding your film. I know this because I've helped create four grants a year and I watch the trailers on all of them. Believe me, I see every trailer. It's so important in film funding. I know it's a major component to winning a grant because I see that all the time. Our grant is now 29 years old. The Roy Dean Film Grant gets awarded four times a year. And I want to remind you our last grant has a deadline of Halloween, October 31st. In case you want to apply, just check on our website under grants. I always listen to the judges when they're considering our finalists. And I've learned that it's the trailer that makes the difference. If the trailer is dynamic, they know you can make a film. And I truly believe that's one of the deciding factors. The trailer shows them that you are a filmmaker. Uh, it may show them the stuff that dreams are made of. It shows us that you can take a complicated subject and give me a good story under five minutes. That's real talent. The trailer can sometimes override the written material because it has structure and information. And that's what we're covering today in our class, how to build one. So the outline for the class is that I cover film funding trailers, 
And then Brianne will talk about abundance and how to bring abundance into your life. Because these two work together. It's building the trailer and being totally open to receive, focusing on the fact that you're open to receive abundance in your life to support you and your film is paramount to your success in crowdfunding, film funding, making an ask, everything you do to raise money, you need to believe that the money belongs to you. People want to support you. Uh, people are honored to support you. You've got to believe that. So I have a special treat for you today. Brianne and I know that many of you are film buffs. So what we're going to do is give you six famous film quotes today. I'll mention four and Brie will mention two. And the minute you hear the film quote, write it in the chat box. So you could write either the name of the film or who said it, either one would work. And I've already mentioned one, the stuff that dreams are made of came from a film. And if you know that film or the actor who said it, you can put it in the chat box to win the How to Fund Your Film class. So we'll give each of you who gets the quote right, my new three hour class like Nahi told you. And he'll watch the chat box and tell us who the winners are and get their email address. So I just want you to listen really closely for some of your favorite film quotes. Now let's get into the trailer because the trailer is what you need once you get through the planning and thinking stage for your film. Even if you're just beginning to put together your website, I guarantee you that the site will be much more effective if it includes a video. In today's world, this is a must. It doesn't have to be a fully constructed trailer at the very beginning, but everyone expects to see that you can make a film. So what I want to cover today is number one, important things to consider when you're making your trailer, different types of trailers, the feature trailer, the three act structure. There is so much information to share with you on trailers that we'll have to have two classes. It's too much for one class. So in class two, we'll cover the opening frames that are the most important part of your trailer and the first few seconds of your trailer, how critical they are to the success. We'll cover music for trailers and we'll cover many often asked questions and a list of tips for trailers. A guest musician composer, um, donor to the grant, David Raiklin will be here to discuss original music and we'll cover how and when to hire a musician, how to get the most co-creating with your musician. We'll discuss pre-recorded music score versus original score, which is better for you. And we'll have information on how long it takes to make a trailer and the approximate cost. And you can talk to David direct with questions and get answers from a professional music person about music in your film, as well as music for the trailer. The trailer is really important. So let's get started with important things to consider when making your trailer. In the initial stages of your project, it pays to think seriously about what information your trailer should contain and what you want it to look like. Now there's several different types of trailers. So the first kind that you need will be a fundraising trailer. And the budget for your funding trailer will probably be between 10 and $15,000. And that's where the old catch 22 comes in. You don't have the money to make the trailer and you can't raise the money without the trailer. And so this is the time when you really need friends and family. You've got to go to them with a heartfelt ask saying that the trailer is the most valuable piece of your funding toolkit. You want to ask for a donation and explain how you will use the money. Making a crowdfunding campaign through your friends and family just for this one amount, that's what I suggest. You really can't raise money without showing people what a great filmmaker you are. And if you 
go after money and you only raise a small amount of money, which is less than what you really need for the full funding trailer, you can use that money to make what we call a, te a teaser trailer. This will give your audience a very good approximation of your concept. And this is also known as a sizzle reel. And the purpose is to generate interest and buzz for your project. So these kind of uh, trailers use video stills or video clips that you can get from YouTube or Google. And you can look online for a product, but just be careful what you pick because this trailer is going to be online. And the trailer can be made with these elements, video clips, video stills, your own still shots, and any newspaper clips or articles that have been written about your film. All of that can be in there. You can also use pictures of the subjects, pictures of places that are important to the film. And a good montage style teaser trailer can be made with these elements. What you want to do is create or purchase some effective music. And in editing, you want to create a snappy pacing. And now you have yourself an affordable trailer to show. So if your project is biographical or if it involves a subject that's more on the somber side, this montage idea can still work, but you want to replace the title cards with voiceover and give it a much more human touch. So by using this teaser trailer, you should be able to raise enough money to do your most important funding trailer. Now, usually the top question is, what do I shoot first? And here your thoughts should turn to the creation of the entire trailer. There are things to consider. First, your project will live and die by the quality of its fundraising trailer. So make it brilliant. Several years ago, the sponsored filmmaker buyers, Opera Steel, called me to discuss a quote of $2,500 to edit a trailer. She thought that was too much money. And I told her, pay the money and just keep going. I said it would be the best investment she ever made. And a few years later, she emailed me saying, I won an award with my trailer. Thank you very much. It was the right thing to do. So I'm saying all this to tell you, do not skimp on the trailer. And when you play the trailer, you can't be sitting there saying it should have been this or that, but I didn't have enough money. That trailer is a standalone and has to work on its own. So what I want you to do is visualize your trailer. You may need to get online and start looking at award-winning trailers, particularly those that won grants, and you can also look at crowdfunding trailers that have raised $50,000 and up. You want to look at mainly documentarian trailers for documentaries and webisodes. And for features, look at the current feature trailer releases. I really want you to watch as many trailers as you can to get a feel for their structure and pacing. Structure and pacing is the heart of the trailer. And next, you need to understand that there will be multiple versions of your trailer. The first one will probably be short and simple. And as you raise more money, you can invest more into your trailer. You'll have more footage to use. You'll have more direction on your film. So I want you to mentally construct the trailer in your mind and visualize your viewers being moved. And once you can see your trailer, then you can create it. Because I've heard filmmakers say, I'm going to shoot my trailer and I really hope I get what I need. Well, that should not be something you hope for. It should be something you planned for. You may have to ask the same question three times to elicit the answer you need. So be prepared for that. You don't want people to say, what we've got here is failure to communicate. 
Stephanie Howard, one of our physically sponsored filmmakers, gave me a good tip. She says she always leaves her camera on after interviews, even though she tells her cameraman, turn off the camera, he leaves it on because by then people are relaxed and sometimes what they say off camera is better than what they said when they were on camera. Now, Stephanie also asks her crew, do you have any questions you want to ask? And many times they have brilliant questions yes. she didn't ask. So remember, this is a co-creative venture, so use everyone on your crew to help you. Now, in raising money, I say, touch my heart, and I open my pocketbook. Because that's how most of us truly are. We're all connected through our heart chakra. So I want you to put emotion in your trailer. Think about using the sticky story outline that we covered in our first class. You want to include something emotional, concrete, credible, and shocking in your story. A shocking story might include, I'm having an old friend for dinner. Now, we've come to one of the hardest questions of all. How long should my trailer be? And I'm gonna share a lot of information. And in the end, I'm sorry, but you have to decide for yourself the time based on your current materials and the guidance I have for you. First, let's start with the brilliant Fernando Rossi, who says, once you have a lot of footage, make a 10 minute trailer. Then you can cut it down to a five or a three or a two as you need it. Well, this is excellent advice for those of you who have that much footage. But now what do I think personally? As long as I'm engaged, I will watch a trailer up to six or seven minutes. And sometimes filmmakers send me a string out from their film. And I, when I start watching, many times I realize I've been watching for 10 minutes and I didn't even realize it. Now that tells me this is a really good film. And particularly when it says, I'm sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I can't do that. Now let's go back to Bill Woolery. He's a great trailer editor. And he says a trailer should end just before it gets boring. And Bill often aimed for a two minute trailer. He said that was uh, an excellent time. And if he went over two minutes, that people would never notice because the material was so excellent. And crowdfunding videos are longer. Check out Kickstarter. Some of them are over five minutes and they raged. They raised a lot of money. So Karen Everett, who I highly respect, likes her trailers to be under two minutes. I know that that's quite a feat to do a fundraising trailer and put all the information in it that you gathered over years into two minutes. And I'm sure there's some good uses for that. It certainly shows what a great artist you are. And I find that between three and five minutes is the normal length of trailers that apply for my grant. I hope this helps you decide on the length. It's a complicated thing. And you are definitely going to have different timed trailers for different grants and for different purposes. So uh, let's go into the three act structure. I'm going to quote Bill Woolery's information. He says that dynamic, com competent trailer editing is much more complicated because they have to construct most narrative much more than narrative filmmakers realize. A well-cut trailer is a very busy world. There are lots of things going on simultaneously. At every moment, there are multiple arcs. Each character has an arc. The main story has an arc. And then there is the emotional arc. And they are all intertwined. So that's a lot to juggle. Just be sure to fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. For me, the overall flow of the trailer works best 
when it's divided into a three act structure. While narrative films are often divided into chapters, trailers are not. I think the three act format is really a very functional way to design your trailer. And that's the structure that you most often see. Personally, I, I enjoy the mood each act brings. It seems more fulfilling to me, sort of like you're getting a three course meal in three to five minutes of the trailer's duration. So I asked Bill to describe each of the three acts of a trailer. And he said, in act one, you're establishing the emotional mood of the trailer and introducing the characters. It's the exposition phrase where you're using dialogue bites and scenes set up the story. You wanna set up your story in this first phase. Act two is the development phase what happened to these people and events as they interact. This is usually the longest act and sometimes the climax occurs at the end of it. If you're not planning on a cliffhanger to finish the trailer, then act three can take several different modes. In most cases, it's the start of the end run an emotional bill that moves strongly towards a cliffhanger climax ending. Or if the climax occurred at the end of act two, this can take the form of a wrap up montage with the voiceover stating why this film is important and why the viewers should see it. To these elements, you can add an opening and intriguing attention getting first few seconds. That's really the key. Bill thinks that, I think that. And Bill says you can add a coda, which is a scene or a dialogue bite placed just before or just after the end title. And if your trailer has a highlighted theme, it will be the cosmic end button. Just be sure that you realize what my mama always said, life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. So arranging your material into three acts is a good way of organizing. But be sure that you never jeopardize the trailer's flow and momentum. It's something that needs to be done carefully. There can be hard and soft three-act structures. There can be something about telling a story in three acts that's inherently satisfying to people. That's all the information that I've got right now for you in this first class. But I want to say that if you want to become the greatest trailer maker possible, then I suggest you use the words, I am, and say daily, I'm a fantastic trailer maker. There's a great book called The I Am Discourses in which they say that nothing will bless the individual to such a great degree as the conscious understanding of these creative words, I am. By stating, I am a fantastic trailer maker, daily you will become what you say. So, Nahi, do we have any questions? Uh, so far, no questions. So, uh, audience, please, if you have any questions, type them in the uh, chat box. Uh, however, we do have winners. Uh, you want to announce them at the end or? Well, what have you got so far? What have they caught? Uh, all of them pretty much have been caught. The first one, the Maltese Falcon, uh, has been worn by Cahill Muggs. Bravo. He got it. Yep. And then the uh I'm 70 uh, years old. Good for you. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> I have to say, like there are two who are paying attention. Keep uh, Pearson and Rosemary Smith. Uh Kip Pearson won the uh cool hand look okay. and uh, failure to communicate. And then Rosemary Smith actually won two. She was the first to type. She's paying attention. The uh, silence of the lambs and all about Eve. Well, and Mary's home address. And so with yes, the I will I'll announce that. And then also the last one to win uh, Forrest Gump is Akiva Penaloza. 
Wonderful. So uh, please uh, send us your email uh, to info at from the heart productions. I'll also type it there. And congratulations for the win. Yes, thank you. That was fun. Rosemary, also send me your street mailing address and I'll send you my book, The Art of Film Funding. You might enjoy that. There's a whole lot in there about trailers. So Brianne would love to have you share your information on abundance. Good morning, Carol. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Well, I was really thrilled when I heard Carol was doing this because trailers are your calling card and they can really make or break the film. And it's really funny because I was talking with a friend and we were talking about how sometimes we see trailers and the trailers are a lot better than the actual movie. So we don't know what happens in between, but it's wonderful. So they're your calling card. Now, what I'm going to talk about is money. And we need money. And we're in a time where rich people are made wrong, greed, we're fearful of being seen as greedy. And that is not good because we need money. And they say money can't buy happiness, but it sure buys everything else. <laughs> so what I would like to share with is the number one secret that I have found to making money and getting in a great money flow. Now I have spent thousands of dollars taking money classes but this is what to me it all boils down to is you need to discover what works for you and how you make money because we're all different we all have different backgrounds we have different experiences we have different desires and if we try to follow one formula it doesn't work and i've taken tons of classes that prove that so what i would like to do is just share what goes into this? Okay, so number one is clarifying what you want. Sometimes people will just say, I want abundance, I want abundance, I want abundance. Well, what does that mean? Because the word abundance just means a lot. So if you're putting that out there, you could be asking, do you want more problems? Do you want more health issues? I mean, where is your abundance coming from? And what is your definition? So really defining what it is that you would like to create. And as far as the money goes, because most of the time it's money. And I find you need to use an amount and a time frame because the universe responds well to that. So what amount do you ask for? Well, you could, um, some of the therapist friends said after the secret came out, what would happen is people would ask for to make a million dollars in a month. They'd go sit in their armchair and then get mad when they didn't, their million dollars didn't show up. I don't think you necessarily want to do that because your brain really can't wrap your head around it. What I like to do when I do this process is ask for just beyond what I think is possible. For example, if you need $25,000 for your film, ask for 30. And what that does is that really gives a lot of energy to the ask. And so just kind of play with that. And then what time frame do you need? Now, of course, a lot of people want it immediately. And you can absolutely try that. You can try within a month. I personally find two months works well for me. So I will choose a day between like 45 and possibly 90 days out. Now, when you set your date, you have to watch that you don't put in, in any expectations. And that the expectations would be setting yourself up for failure. It's like, what do you decide about you happens if the day passes and you don't get it? And that's really big because a lot of people really set themselves up for failure. When I first started doing energy healing work, I was amazed at the amount of people who would come and show up and say, well, I'm just here to prove that this technique doesn't work. <laughs> okay, why would you do that? But people do that. They do that a lot of subconsciously and, you know, trolls are really big and, you know, all of that kind of thing. So I don't need to explain that to you. But when you pick a number and you pick a time frame. watch what your reaction is, sit in the energy and look at it. Does it feel doable? Do you have the, oh, it's never gonna happen energy? Well, if that comes up, awesome. That's just a sign that that stuff needs to go and you need to get rid of it. 
So what release techniques do you have? One of my favorite ones, because I've studied a lot of them, is you just throw it out to the ends of the universe. Like, you know what? No, this is not me. Whoosh, and you throw it out to the ends of the universe. But it's really important that you start recognizing those and talking to them. I believe that the universe really responds well to the vocal and the, the vocal, the words. And please do that as much as possible. Now, once you get it to where you don't have reactions to it, awesome. How I do it is I track it. I would recommend that you really track this. And how I do it, what I find works for me and play with what works for you is I get a journal. And I have five columns in that journal. The first column is the date. The second is where the money came from. The third is the amount. The fourth is a running total of how much I've made during the frame. And then the fifth one is the subtraction and how much I need to go. And for some reason, I found that just works well with my mind. But play with it because you need to look at it and you need to check in. And checking in keeps it in your field. It keeps it in the now. And allowing yourself just to be in there is where you will create. Now, once you've got that, the number two is putting it out there is there's a lot of techniques out there that say you put it out there once and then you forget about it. And then there's the other side of you think about it and you obsess about it daily. I think the answer is in the middle. It's just you do it in your meditation. I think it's good to remind the universe every day of what it is that you would like. And you can just say, all right, universe, let's, how can we make money today? Where's our money showing up? What pleasant surprises with money can we have today? And putting that out there. And the reason why I believe you need to do it every day without expectations is because so much crazy stuff goes on in our brain. There's a lot of negativity. So we need to keep reminding the universe what it is that we want. And it's awesome. Now, that also needs to say, too, is pay attention. And, you know, sometimes we don't make money every day. Now, that's okay, and that's normal. But if you have, like, periods of slow times, start changing up the ass. Like, all right, universe, is there anything I'm doing that's stopping this? Show me, please. Universe, can I change something to change my money flow? And just see what shows up. Because the truth is, we'd like you to be in the habit of receiving money. Because that's what it is. Receiving money is a great habit to get into. And that's what the rich people have mastered. And that's what you would like to master. And the third kind of talked a little bit about processing out the energy. Um, I always hear things, other people talking, that gives me a clue as to some things that I need to let go of. Don't drive yourself crazy. But if there's a negative thought, you hear a negative thing like, oh, nope, that's not me. Push it out. Because you can't allow those things to step into your field, set up into your field. So another thing that's really big, too, is looking at your parents' money. Um, they say that when you were two, where your parents were with money is a lot of things that you, until you change it, will automatically replicate. And for most of it, us, that's not a good thing. So just kind of looking at that, letting go of all that, it's like, you know, I recognize that's my parents, that's not me, and you just push it out. Um, number four is allow yourself to deal with money from the past, your current money situation and money from the past. And I think that that's important because that will help ground you into money more. Because there's a lot of times, you know, we don't want to look at our bank account that's small. We don't want to deal with old debt and all of that. But the truth is, sometimes we can't deal with the money or deal with the issues that cause that until we're in the actual energy of it. So it's great to get your credit cards paid off. Now, I understand bankruptcy is an option for people and some people if you, you should use it if that's what you need. However, I would also seriously suggest if you do that, that you really look at the programs that got you to the enormous debt. 
Sometimes it's things out of your control, but sometimes it's overspending and things because I've known so many people that got into trouble, they declared bankruptcy, they shed it, and then four or five years later, they're right back there because they didn't take care of the programs. So doing yourself a favor is good. Now with money, money likes agreements and money likes you to make agreements and stick to them. Um, I learned that years ago, um, Wells Fargo had my car note loan. And what they were doing is this is when they were doing their big shenanigans. And they were adding $300 a month to my car note loan because I didn't have insurance. I had insurance and I was paying for insurance, but they were adding it. So they got busted. They got that out of there. And I said, you know what? Forget this. Screw them. I'm going to pay this off. So I made a deal for myself that Every time I was in the bank, I would give some money, even if it was $20 towards the note. I would mail a check every week. I made sure that every week money got to the, against that. And I tell you, I paid it off in two and a half years because success is the best revenge. But what I realized is, you know, it is all about making the agreements and keeping them because it got to a point where if I tried to walk out of that bank without paying 20, at least $20 on me, on my uh, note, it would yell at me. So just doing that. So really looking at money. Number five is allowing yourself to have money. Because a lot of times we don't. We have a lot of habits, most of us, where we spend money. We don't pay attention to where our money goes. Some people need to have a budget. And if that works for you, awesome. I don't particularly like a budget. To me, it feels too restrictive. But I also am aware of where my money goes. And I believe that everybody needs to make a deal to invest in some point. Put your money somewhere where it can possibly grow for you. Because what that will do is that tells the universe that we want money. And this is a savings account. This is past a savings account. This is crypto stocks because we need the savings account. But this other helps grow too. Um, I've always invested here and there. And I heard a story several years ago that really inspired me to invest more. A missionary was sent to Africa and he was in kind of a remote village and they were it was a really good mission to where they were, you know, bringing people to Jesus, but they were also helping build um, water systems and all of that. And so he was talking about how he went in and every day at a certain day, a group of the people would gather together and they'd be looking at something. And he immediately went into, oh, they're just doing some sort of pagan ritual. Okay, oh, whatever. And he let it go. Well, after a couple of weeks, he noticed that this happened every weekday. And so he stuck his nose in. Well, what they were doing was, and I so love this story. Um, the elder had a new iPhone and they had a satellite system set there. And what they were doing every day at that particular time was looking at their stock account <laughs> and this group these people in the middle of nowhere they were making it work and their stock account when they showed him was a hundred thousand dollar us can you imagine that and i heard this story i'm like okay so people who have one millionth of the resources I do are making this work. I have no excuse not to invest and not to be on top of my investments. And I loved it. So, you know, we can buy crypto. If you have a Venmo account, you can buy crypto. There's Robinhood. There's ground floor to spend $10 on investments. So, you know, there's everything. So what I think is if you allow yourself to invest small, because we have a wonderful time where you don't need big money to invest, that will help move and shift your energy with money. And number six is, you know, just watch your programs, watch your habits and just allow yourself to get rid of them. Um, are you still finding money flying out the window on problems? allow yourself to look at that and allow yourself to change it. And the same with receiving programs. Who don't you receive from? Allowing yourself to, just setting out the energy is like, I allow myself to receive money from someone I've never received money for. That's awesome. 
Um, and looking at how you receive, one of the things a telltale is, do you receive compliments? If no, you need to change that. Do you receive help and niceties? No, well then you need to change that and just allow your energy to be more in the receiving mode. Now, when you get rid of some of the negative ones, you still need to build new ones. And we talk about, you know, the I am, like Carol mentioned, are great affirmations. I am wonderful with money. I am a money magnet. And building a new foundation with affirmations is wonderful. And you need to do that and pay attention. And just see what resonates with you, because some affirmations will resonate and some will not, but allow yourself to do that. And number eight is what I call is seeing your allowance rhythm, looking at the energy of where you receive, where you don't, and allowing your allowance rhythm to receive. It's like, oh, you know what? I've never allowed myself to receive money from my parents for my films. You know what? I allow myself to receive money from my parents for my films. And also what this will do too is looking at problems, you'll see problems in a different light because a lot of times problems are not big, huge issues, but they're showing us something that we need to fix. A couple of days ago, I was here at the office and I went to go check my crypto accounts and I've got three and I couldn't get into two of them. And it was scary. I first thought, oh my God, it's been hacked. I just went into crazy meltdown mode. And then finally, after 10 minutes of that, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's a problem here. Cleared my energy. I'm like, what caused this? And what I realized is just before all of this happened, one of my clients called and she wanted to come into the office for an appointment and she was going to be there in about an hour. And what I realized is there was some weird energy attached to her that kind of blew out my energy. Well, sure enough, she came in and she had fallen head over heels for this guy who had really bad energy. He was a vampire energy. He had been attached to her and it was all ick. We cleaned that off. And the second that she left, I checked and everything was fine. Everything was magically fine. But what it shows is I needed to work on not letting the vampire energies affect my energy. So that's just, it's just all about you asking for what you want, looking at any issues that stop you and not allowing yourself to go into any greed. Because if you believe in greed, that means you believe in lack. And the truth is there really isn't a shortage of many things. There's plenty of money and people are creating new things to create money all the time. There's plenty of food, unfortunately, it doesn't get distributed to people, but there's plenty. So just looking at greed and being able, and then the last one is just being grateful for you, being grateful for your ideas. I can pretty much guarantee you that your ideas and your films want you to be more grateful so you can create more things. And they love you and money loves you. And just stepping into that and being grateful for all that's wonderful. And then last is, you know, just about receiving money from other people. Because money won is twice as sweet as money earned. Thank you, Carol. Oh, you're so welcome, Brianne. And I, I want to go back to one of the things you said is my favorite is surprise money. This is wonderful for filmmakers because you always are putting out all this energy to market your film while you're making it. And you have touched a lot of people. And maybe they're on the fence trying to decide, should I give some money to her or him or not? So the more that you ask the universe for surprise money and thank them, for everything they do for you on a daily basis. Thank, always thank the universe. Uh, that I think really brings in that surprise money that someone you met three months ago, two years ago, wants to help you. And they send you some money and you never expected it. It's a joy. So yes, ask the universe for surprise money. You put the energy out and it's floating out there with a lot of people a lot of grant applications, I'm sure. So 
be surprised. Say, show, show me something here, right, Brianne? That's how absolutely, you absolutely. And with surprise money, one of the things that I do is I find a lot of the surprise money is little things. Like one time I found a 1970s silver Thailand dime on the ground. Awesome. Well, I picked it up and I went into that. It was the most wonderful surprise money ever. And what I found is that really opened up my energy. I had some new clients book. I had some people who paid me for sessions I had in the past that they hadn't paid for. And it was nice because the more we can be grateful for the small things, the more the universe says, oh, they love this. OK, let's give them more. Let's give them bigger. So absolutely. Absolutely. And you never know when it's cut, where it's coming from. So exactly. That's so much fun. So thank you very much for joining us today. And I hope you'll come back for class two when we have David Raikland. He's such a lovely man. He's done a great job um, creating music for films and donating to our grant. He's he is a special kind of person, one that all of you, I'm sure, would love to to meet and know. So any questions that you have, save them, bring them with you next time. And David will give us a lot of personal guidance because you really need to know how to get the most out of the musician that you work with on your film. There's a lot to learn from David. So are there any questions we need to answer, Nahid? Yes, they are uh, very good questions. But first, I want uh, to congratulate the winners. And I've already sent all of them direct messages to email us uh, for the confirmation of the class. So Austin Jacobs, uh, Margs Cahill, Kip Pearson, Rosemary Smith, and Akiva Penaloza are the winners. You already have information on uh, emailing us uh, for the class details. And then to the questions, Carol. So the first uh, questions is from Kip uh, Pearson. Uh, she asked, do you reveal the end of the movie in a trailer? That's a very good question. <laughs> I would say it depends on what the subject matter is. And do you think that that will bring you the most money or do you want to uh, keep it hidden? And will that bring you the most money? The trailer, the whole purpose for the trailer is to get people involved and make them uh, want you to finish the film so that they get, that they are part of the story, particularly if it's an incredible story. Um, so I would say that that's really, that's really your decision if you give it or not. I like it. Uh, in a trailer where I want to know more. So then I, uh, because I, then I contact the filmmaker and or go and read the proposal. Um, but you have to meditate on this and find out, and maybe uh, you don't, uh, maybe you have two trailers that you use for different things. So the answer would be both, if that's possible. Um, it depends on if you're going for a grant and, and you have a, gr a really good ending to your film, I want to hear it. Uh, if you're going for money, I might be more apt to, to uh, contact you and say, what's the result? How is this thing? What is so special? Because you, you really want the trailer to leave them wanting more, all right? This is what they... Uh, the people who create the two minute trailers for films that you used to see in the theater, they knew that if you saw a trailer six times, you would be in that theater and see the film. So there's a lot of, of analytics and information around trailers and seeing them and repeating them over and over. So uh, keep your trailer playing everywhere you can uh, at all times, because the more people see it, the more they get involved emotionally and mentally with your film. I'd say that you have to uh, find it through your own meditation, and maybe you do reveal it for grants and you don't for people when you're asking. 
but get them involved. You want people to start asking you questions about the film so you know you've crossed this line of faith and likability and trust. This is what you have to do. See, people give money to people. And what you have to do is create enough trust and respect between your trailer, your, your own personal uh, relationship with the donor or the grantor and get them over this, uh, do I trust them? Which is always the thing hanging out there, the trustability, trust and likability. You've got to achieve that. And that's why you want the trailer to be dynamite. Does that answer your question? Yep. I hope so. Okay, um, here's the next question, uh, Carol. This comes from Rosemary Smith, also a very uh, good question. Uh, talks about, uh, I'll just read the question the way she wrote it. Our trailer seems dark to me. While our films deal with some hard issues, we do leave people with an uplifting ending and positive actions they can take to help, make, to help them make the world a better place. How can we present that in a trailer? Uh, you have to touch my heart first. Uh, I want you to put all those things in we talked about for the sticky story. You've got to get the sticky story in there. Um, yes, you have, uh, there's something horrific happening. I want you to know that. Yes, there is a solution. You are the solution. Your support will help us finish this film and we can do X, Y, and Z. We can reach, we can change laws, we can uh, mass, uh, we can affect mass groups of people through our film screenings. I don't know how you can put all this in your trailer, but that's, you have to make me feel totally positive that you will get this to the right people. Uh, and you can affect change with my support. So actually what you're asking people to do is join a community. It's supporting a film, but that film is supported by a community of people who are interested in solving the problem, bringing the attention to people in power who can do something about it. Does that help? So here's another question uh, from Crystal Johnson to everyone. Do we collect money with an LLC business? What do most people do? Yes, the LLC. Legally, you have more protection with an LLC. And that is very important. Uh, so you, you do want to have an LLC. You also want to consider having a fiscal sponsor so that your donors can get a tax write-off. I'm sure you understand how the fiscal sponsor works, but I'll just quickly explain that uh, filmmakers long ago found that the benefit of giving a tax write-off to a donor is incredible. They love it and they know they're not writing the check to you they're writing the check to a nonprofit who has to report that income to the government and who gets a certified accountant to look at their books once a year and go through a rigorous <laughs> audit to stay in business. So um, that helps you get donations, uh, just letting you know. Uh, but you do want to work out of an LLC. That's the safest place to be. Okay, uh, another question, very good questions from Muggs uh, Cahill. If you don't have a trailer, but they use uh, on-screen text instead, how long should the text stay on the screen? Three seconds, five seconds, what do you suggest? Uh, it's, it's text, you're talking about putting screens up, right? Putting up a screen with, um, with writing on it, so comments. Correct, correct. Uh, yeah, I hope you've got some uh, good pacing and music. It's got to keep me interested. 
and uh, you have to sit there and be able to read it yourself and slowly because people coming to your site don't know the subject matter. You've been working on the film probably two to three years. You know it. So think of those who don't. That's who you're after. And so you want to make sure they've got every word before you go to the next screen. And again, this is when you really need music. And the music has to change with your acts. You're going to learn that from David. But it's very important. See, you don't realize it, but when you're watching a trailer, the trailer takes you into act two. And the music takes the trailer into act two and you. And it takes you into act three with the music. And at the end, it's the climax and the music is there. It's fabulous, but music is a key to all trailers, but particularly yours when you're having to read uh, cards like that. Yeah, uh, this is another good question. Uh, uh, it's asking, what do I need to do to get a We Did It crowdfunding page so I can show my uh, trailer? This is by Mary Davis. Well, Mary, if you're if you're physically sponsored with us, all you have to do is send an email to me. Uh, I'll take care of it. I'll send. Make sure you get an invite, uh, and so I'm going to give you my email uh, address if you all want to write it down. And for those of you who would like to, you can send me questions ahead of time for for uh, trailer class two. The most important thing is I want to give you all what you need. So you, uh, for the We Did It, email me at my name, Carol, C-A-R-O-L-E, Lee, Dean, L-E-E-D-E-A-N, at Gmail. Texas okay. name. <laughs> okay. Um, the other question I answered it, they're asking if there'll be a recording available of this event. Oh, and yeah. I told them, yes, absolutely. We will be sending an email to everyone with the recording of this event. I know there's just so much, so much detail in this that yes, we'll have a recording for you and it will end up in at a home on our website uh, under everything you ever want to know about film funding you'll find the first class we did on funding parties and you'll find this class too. Okay. Um, there are no more questions, but I will open it to anyone who wants to speak on the microphone. I can unmute you, just raise your hand and the first three will get to ask a question live to Carol. The most important thing you have to take with you is I am funded, I am fully funded. Think about this. You were born at the right time. This is the third greatest time in the history of mankind. The digital world is now yours. If you, 20 years ago would cost you twice as much, maybe three times as much to make the same film. And you couldn't do it if you didn't really have a great education in the film industry. Now you can. So why would the universe put you here at this time and give you all of this talent and not fund you? No, they'd never do such a thing. So this is why Brienne and I work as a team. I've got the how-to and she's telling you to open yourself and receive because the universe wants you you, you're our last vestige of honesty. We can trust you to bring us information, show us both sides, let us make decisions. But we need true journalists and reporting. Uh, and that's true when you do a film about a person who's done something wonderful and we don't want to forget them. Uh, Character-driven docs are very important to me. I love them. So all of you are incredibly talented and you have to take this knowledge with you and remember how great you are 
Absolutely. And Carol, um, this is Brianne. I would like to add is absolutely what you're saying is so true. And film is one of the few freedoms we have left. So all of these trailblazers, this is a really great way to get your point across to expose problems and show where we need to grow. So it's awesome. And it doesn't have to be hard. It's like we're, we're in a space right now to where we have more knowledge, more awareness, and we just don't have to make it so hard. Gone are the days of, you know, my father was a farmer where our is money and no you can do all kinds of things and money can flow from so many places that it doesn't have to be hard that it doesn't have to take a lot of work it can all be easier and i think that's what the universe is trying to tell us now yes yes it is so thank you all very much and i hope you will join us again for part two uh next month lots of luck for all of you Thank you, Carol. No, it was such a pleasure. Thank you, Brianne. Oh, thank you, Carol. I really enjoy it. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Always. Well, Nahid, would you take a copy of what's in the chat bar so I can see it? Absolutely. I will send it to you and uh, we'll have a recording sent to everyone. Okay, fabulous. Thank you. Lots of love to your father. Okay, thank you. And thank you everyone for joining.